What is up, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today what you're going to be listening to is the final position outlook for the Jacksonville Jaguars heading into 2019. We're talking about the defensive line. We're going to touch a little bit on Yannick Ngakwe. We're going to talk about Calais Campbell and Taven Bryan's progression as well and how he is going to fit into this Jacksonville Jaguar defensive line in 2019. But before we get into the video, why don't you go ahead and drop a like down below if you think the defensive line is the strongest group for the Jaguars heading into 2019 and hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's are just straight facts. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the video. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today we have our final installment of the Jaguars 2019 Positional Outlooks, and today we're talking about the defensive line. Now, this defensive line is probably the best group that the Jaguars have out of any position group heading into 2019, and it's probably been the best for the last two to three years. The Jaguars have focused their last two first-round draft picks on the defensive line to build depth for this group and you know we have Yannick Ngakwe who we'll talk about a little bit and you know how he's gonna factor in if the Jaguars don't even offer him a contract regardless this guy has to play so regardless we're gonna have Yannick Ngakwe in black and teal next year unless a stupid trade happens in which case I will be very very pissed but this is the Jaguars 2019 positional outlook for the defensive line. So first of all, let's talk about the depth before we address the starters. So as far as depth goes, we're going to say Yannick Ngakwe and Calais Campbell as of right now are the starting ends. I would say that the Jags might be moving Calais inside, but I'm not 100% sure on what they're doing with that. I think that would be the best move and then have Yann and Josh on the edges. But the Jags are going to do what they're going to do. And, and uh, Calais Campbell has been an end since he's came to Jacksonville. So I wouldn't think any different. So that's how we're going to view it. So we're going to be talking about our starting four is going to be with Calais at an edge. is going to be Calais, Yannick Ngakwe, Marcel Darius, Avery Jones. So those are four guys. So everybody underneath of that, we got Taven Bryan. Taven Bryan is a guy that has a 76 overall in Madden. Yet, he didn't do anything last year. You know, Jason said that he was good against the run. You know, we talked about their Madden ratings. But, you know, even then, it's like how good against the run was he to the point where he deserves that 76 overall rating. You know, did he have like an ungodly grade against the run? I'm not too sure. I wasn't too hyped on the Taven Bryan pick. I wasn't like a lot of people were, a lot of people were pissed. And I wasn't like a lot of people were there like, oh my god, the front office, genius. Calais Campbell only has so much more years. Taven Bryan can replace him. We saw what Taven Bryan can do. Calais Campbell's great against the run, and he's also a fantastic pass rusher. He's a do-it-all guy. And he's going to be a guy that's hard to replace. Don't get me wrong in that aspect. And Taven Bryant's not just going to come in, you know, when he comes in and just replace him. You know, that's not what's going to happen. Taven Bryant's going to have to develop a little bit. And I think last year he didn't develop 100% all that he needed to. I think this year, hopefully, you know, if he gets some playing time at defensive tackle instead of, you know, the defensive end position, which I think he will. His Instagram bio even says defensive tackle for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So I think that, you know, when he comes in and plays a little bit of defensive tackle, that's going to play more to his strength as far as, you know, being good against a run and not necessarily being a true, you know, pass rushing guy. And I think that's where he should have been from the jump. I thought the Jags should have played him at defensive tackle from the second he came into Jacksonville. But they had different, differing opinions and probably wanted him to succeed Calais Campbell. They seen what he did and it was bad and he wasn't great at the defensive end position. So now he's going back to the defensive tackle position, which again, I think he will he will thrive at more than he would at a defensive end position. So Taven Bryan is a guy that I think is going to benefit from the switch of scenery from the defensive end to the defensive tackle position. And now we got guys like Dewan A. Smoot. Dewan A. Smoot has not got a lot of playing time. You know, there's not a lot we can say about him. You know, I'm sure he's a great guy. He has a great YouTube channel. Go check him out. But, you know, I haven't seen enough of Dewan A. Smoot to give a 100% opinion on what I think of him or, you know, what he does for the Jaguars. I think he will get a little bit of increased playing time this year, 
um, as opposed to what he had last year because I think, uh, you know, Josh Allen's going to kind of be the Dante Fowler of the group. He's going to be rotating in at the defensive end position. And then, you know, when Calais gets a little tired, which, you know, is it's barely ever. It seems like Calais is out there on every defensive snap. So, you know, bearing an injury, Dwane Smoot probably going to come in for him and see what he can do. He's solid against the run. He does have a sack. I think he got one sack last year, so he does have a sack to his resume. Like I said, though, I don't haven't seen enough tape of Dewane Smoot, you know, in a professional setting to say that he's going to be a really solid depth guy. But, you know, the thing is with the Jags is they have a really, you know, a top-heavy defensive line, you know, with Marcel Darius, Avery Jones, and those guys. And we'll dive into those guys coming up. But Dewane Smoot, I think, is going to be a reliable backup. I think he won't have to play very much unless Calais gets hurt, in which case, too, I think we'll just have two speed ends and, you know, Calais, and then that'll be what it is. But, you know, there's another guy, you know, that we'll talk about here in a little bit, Avery Jones, who I have a lot of good things to say about. I would like to see him kind of rotate in the defensive tackle position. You know, him and Taven Bryan, dude, being rotational defensive tackles. And then, you know, you got Smoot coming in at the end position to kind of balance it out. You know what I'm saying? So, as far as depth goes, I think it could be worse. It's just a couple of guys that are unproven. You know, Taven Bryan and Smoot are both the guys that... Um, out of all the defensive linemen that aren't the starters, probably will get the most playing time. So, you know, we haven't seen enough from them, and hopefully in 2019, this is the year they break out, and we see enough from them to where we are confident in what they are and confident when they head on to the field. Now let us discuss the starting four. I think the Jaguars' defensive line started a movement amongst the whole NFL. You look at all these teams now, and they build their whole defense on their front four. And I'm I, I'm not saying this is a new concept by any means. I mean, the Seattle, the Seahawks probably were the first team to do this. But, you know, with the Jags investing into their defensive line, which for some reason, even though they do that, they still have a problem extending Yannick and Cockway, and it's fucking pissing me off. But, you know, the Jaguars kind of, you know, made that famous a little bit. We were kind of the next group to be that team that invests in their defensive line to make sure that they have a lot of good pass rushers. Because in today's league, dude, pass rushers are just as important as the quarterback position on the defensive side of the ball. Because with how good all these starting quarterbacks are in the NFL, if you give them, you know, any more time than they need to throw the ball, it's a completion 100% of the time. Because, you know, you could be the best corner in the league, example, Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boye, but, you know, if you're running around with a receiver for five six seconds you know they could just run out somewhere get open and then end up getting a catch and you know ending up costing us a first down but the Jags have four guys that can get after the quarterback five including Josh Allen the rookie who uh set the SEC sack record last season um not the SEC sack record but he was the leader in the SEC in sacks last season so that's a good addition to the Jaguars defensive line and he's gonna be very exciting to watch you know he's a raw guy He came into Jacksonville to kind of fill that Dante Fowler role, and he does have a little bit of Dante Fowler in him as far as style goes. He's very raw, and he's very aggressive. You know, he's going to probably be doing a lot of things like Dante where we're like, dude, Dante just like kicked that guy, punched him in the stomach, and like now he got a sack. You know what I mean? Like Dante was just all over the place making ridiculous moves and would somehow still get sacks. You know, and I think that's going to be kind of like Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen fundamentally is a little bit more fundamentally sound than Dante Fowler was. But, you know, you do see a lot of that raw pass rushing ability that you've seen in Dante Fowler that we see in Josh Allen today. And I'm very excited to see how he develops, especially. I know you guys love it when I say especially, because sometimes I say especially. You guys get so pissed off in the comments. But especially with Yannick Ngakwe, if he does not get extended for the next year, then his time and his progression is going to be very, very important. But Josh Allen's a guy that I would not worry too much about. I'm very excited to see what he has to offer. I think he's going to be very, very, very talented this year. And I'm hoping for maybe a rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year. I'm hoping that he might be able to do that. I don't think the Jags have ever had a defensive rookie of the year or a rookie of the year or an MVP. We've had a rushing leader, had a rushing title winner, but I don't think we've had anything like that. So that'd be cool to bring home to the Jaguars and bring home, you know, uh, an award like that. And I think Josh Allen is very capable of doing that. Now let's talk about the other pass rusher. Pass rushers, Yannick Ngakwe. Obviously, we don't have to talk a lot about him. Everything that we need to say about him has been said. This whole offseason situation about the Jags not extending him has been very, very ridiculous. He's been tweeting out today just random tweets about, like, you know, God's got a plan or, 
you know, we need to get that money, things like that. And then, you know, it's, it, I have to, like, it has to be, like, Jags players like Jalen and Yan, dude, they have to just be laughing at us. Because I guarantee you, dude, like, people retweet this, this stuff and say some things, and, like, they're probably literally just laughing, showing everybody your replies in the locker room. So I wouldn't take those Twitter posts too seriously unless it's, like, an actual direct message saying you know i'm leaving you know i'm gonna go play for the raiders or something crazy like that so uh yannick and gawkway man nothing more can be said about him he's the best pass rusher we have even though calais campbell has got more sacks than him i would say yannick and gawkway especially for the future is one of the best pass rushers in the league could you imagine too for the next four years because we have you know josh allen on that four year and we could offer him a fifth year option with yannick and gawkway if we sign him for four years dude and Calais Campbell eventually retires, maybe two, three years. Dude, this, we have not even, like, diminished anything. Like, we still have two of the best pass rushers in the league at that point. And we still have two guys that can get after the quarterback, make turnovers, force turnovers, make things happen, make plays. Yannick Ngakwe is one of the playmakers on the Jaguars' defense that they cannot lose. You know, there's a certain amount of guys on this team that if the Jags lost them, it would hurt them a lot. Jalen Ramsey, Yannick Ngakwe, and we're going to see Telvin Smith. I think Telvin Smith's going to be one of those guys. And honestly, now I'm coming around to the Miles Jack idea. I didn't think Miles Jack was going to be a guy the Jags extended, you know, maybe during the offseason. I thought they were just going to kind of let him go. But if you realize how much plays this guy makes, and, you know, this year, his first year getting over 100 tackles, his first full year as a starting middle linebacker, we're going to miss Miles Jack's impact. So those are the guys that the Jags need to kind of bring back and make sure that they are part of this defense hopefully for their whole career, or at least until they get all washed up and we can just let them go then, you know what I mean? So Yannick Ngakwe is going to be a guy that hopefully the Jags bring back, and he should have a good season next year. Uh, he can't hold out all season, I don't think. I think there's a clause in his contract or something. He has to be back by August 7th or something like that. So hopefully Yannick Ngakwe is a part of this team next year, and he dominates and plays the way that we all know he can play. Now let's talk about Calais Campbell, a guy who... It's not slowing down anytime soon. He had back-to-back years. His highest year in France and ever in his career in sacks was two years ago, 2017, when we had 14 and a half, and this year's second most of all time with 10 and a half. This guy's getting older and he's getting better, and he's a great leader too. You know, everybody buys into what he has to say, and everybody believes in him. He's been doing it for a long time at a high level. Calais Campbell's a guy that no one should be worried about bearing injury. He is going to, again, be dominant for the Jaguars and be one of the best players on this Jaguar defense, hands down. You know, this is a guy we don't have to spend a lot of time talking about because we really shouldn't be worrying about him unless he totally, this year, just out of nowhere, whoo, hits a drop off and, you know, starts showing his age. But I doubt that. And even if that does happen, you know, Josh Allen could come in and emerge as that guy. You know what I mean? And I think if they move him inside, too, like, this is going to be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how Calais kind of answers to that. But as of training camp is, you know, going on, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But, you know, it might just be me hoping that because, you know, you get the best, all the best players possible on the field, you know what I mean? So, Calais Campbell, a guy that we should not be worried about at all. And the two guys in the middle that I'm very, very, very excited about is Avery Jones and Marcel Darius. They are going to make this run defense terrific. They are both terrific against the run. Avery Jones last year low-key had one of the best years out of any Jaguar defender, and no one really ever talked about it because, you know, he would make plays in the run game, you know, third and twos, hitting them behind the line, hitting them right at the sticks. Marcel Darius has made a whole career of being a great defensive tackle against the run. This Jaguar run defense this year should improve and should be awesome, and it should be a great unit, and it's going to start with these two guys inside with Marcel Darius and Avery Jones. These guys are both terrific against the run, and they both can get sacks too, you know what I mean? They're both decent pass rushers. They can get in there, and this is about the year the league starts recognizing Avery Jones because this is going to be his first full year as a starter, and I'm very, very excited for him. I'm very excited for the opportunity he's been handed because he deserves it. You know, he's came off the bench. He is, you know, he came in for Malik Jackson, I think, as a starter, like in week seven or eight last year, and he did well. He dominated. You know, he did good against the run. He got himself a couple sacks. You know, he did his job. This defensive line is going to be exciting next year. There's going to be tons of good defensive lines all throughout the NFL next year. But this Jacksonville Jaguar defensive line, Every year, it's this elite has a chance to say that they're the best defensive line in the league, and I'm very excited to see what this group can do in 2019. 
And that was my 2019 Jaguars positional outlook for the defensive line. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. In a way, I'll work me. Them's are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.